Hello. All right, we have power. We're good and we're great, and, and now we have power. Uh, we are so glad that y'all are here on this first Sunday of Pentecost to worship uh, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And not only do we get to live in the resurrection uh, that is Christ, but now we get to live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit uh, that came uh, last week as we celebrated his coming at Pentecost, and now we get to see that move in the midst of our lives uh, as we live this Christian life. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, a few announcements I want to give to you. Lay readers are needed. If you would like to occasionally help during Sunday morning worship, please call the office. It usually just consists of uh, this really fun and, and high-paying job that, that I'm doing right now. Uh, just giving the announcements and, and maybe reading a responsive reading and uh, doing the opening prayer as we lead into worship. And so that's a good way for you to get plugged in and involved if you have the gift of the gab. Uh, Sunday night Bible study uh, is tonight starting uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, annual conference is this week. It will be in Baton Rouge. So Brother Kevin and myself will be out June 14th through the 17th. Uh, be praying for that. Be praying for safe travels. And I, I believe uh, Jay Atkins may be going as well. And so uh, for those of us that are traveling, be praying for us. Uh, next Sunday will be Alana and my uh, final Sunday morning with you all uh, as we uh, are planning to transition over to West Monroe at the beginning of July. And so um, I look forward to sharing one last Sunday morning here with you all in the role that I'm uh, currently in. And uh, just in advance, thank you again for, for five wonderful years. And there will be uh, some sort of reception uh, in the fellowship hall right afterwards want to uh, say thank you for your prayers uh, as we traveled to Talladega, Alabama last week. Uh, if there's anyone in here that traveled to Talladega, Talladega Alabama with us uh, this past week and survived and would like to stand, uh, stand up. Okay. Uh, Thank all of you for all your donations, uh, all the money you gave, all the spaghetti that you bought with our fundraisers to help fund this trip. We had uh, just a few hiccups, the least of which uh, did not include uh, the youth minister getting sick the first day, uh, the bus blowing a tire and then not starting, and then a water line blowing in the boys' dorm, and we all had to get relocated to a hotel in town and spend the rest of the week there. And so that was our first 24 hours in Alabama. Um, but we had a, yeah. Other than that was good. Other than that was good, yeah. Other than that was good. So uh, God really moved in the lives of several of our campers and students. And so uh, I say that with, with all joking aside, God really did do some wonderful things uh, in the lives of our young people. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting them in that. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, as we live in the Pentecost season, uh, I, I think of the words John Wesley. If you want to gather a crowd, uh, light yourself on fire and, and tell people uh, that they're invited to come see you burn. Uh, this, this morning, I, I ask that the Holy Spirit would do a work in us, uh, in our hearts, uh, that it would not be an outward work, but it would be an inward work that then moves to the outward parts of our lives. I ask that the Holy Spirit would come and fill this place in worship. God, you are the only one that can redeem and restore and make new and teach and uplift and uh, bring dead things to life. And so this morning, I just ask that you would do that in this place. Be with us as we worship you. Be with us as we sing. Be with us as we pray. Be with us as we give our offerings and be with Brother Kevin as he brings the word this morning. I ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. If you would, let's stand for our affirmation of faith, number 885 in the hymnal. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love. To the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It is good to see all of you in God's house today. So whether you're watching online with us or whether you're worshiping in person, we are glad to have you in God's house. We do want to know who you are. So if you would, please take just a few moments and fill out the tear off section of your bulletin so that we can know who is worshiping with us this morning. That would be of great help to us. We do want to um, to say the next week will be a very special week as we say farewell to the Wagners. We will have a reception to um, honor them immediately following worship. I know it's Father's Day and you may have family obligations, so it's going to be finger foods and light refreshments. It'll be something that you can just stay for a few moments and greet them, and then you can go on to whatever family obligations and activities you might have for Father's Day. So, so that will be next week. We are receiving a love offering for the Wagners, so if you would like to contribute to that, please mark it for the Wagners so that we know that that is your intention um, for that gift to go to that place. So I hope that you will join us next week for that. I do hope that you will pray for us as we have um, what is sure to be an eventful annual conference in Baton Rouge this week. It will be our first in-person annual conference in three years um, because of the pandemic. So um, I think that that's going to make it very interesting, the things that happen there. And we'll give you an update um, when we return. So please, please pray for us as we travel. Please pray for wisdom for the delegates as they make important decisions that will impact our churches. And so we have a lot to, to be praying for this week. You will find all of the prayer requests on the back of your bulletin. Of course, we want to continue to pray for peace for our world and peace in our own country. We want to pray for our local ministry partners. I know that the Wesley Foundation has, I believe, finished their um, mission trip in Appalachia. So um, I know that they did great work up there. I saw some, um, some pictures of their work. So we want to give thanks for what, all that they've accomplished. We do want to... Um, give thanks for a wonderful week for our youth. Um, I, I saw them when they came in on Thursday and they looked pretty darn tired, but uh, I know they had a, a great week and I hope and pray that what was started at camp will be something that, that will continue to, uh, to impact them, not only this year, but for their lifetime. And so we pray that that would um, continue to be an important part of their life. So those are some of the things that um, we need to pray for this morning. Are there others that you know of who are in need of our prayers today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, for Charlie. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, for Mabel Kelly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh. We certainly would do that. Okay. What's her name, Miss Jean? Ma'am? Molly? Okay. Riley. Okay. All right. I received um, a, a message from my parents yesterday, and my mom has been diagnosed with COVID, 
and um, she is a diabetic, so that makes the treatment a little more complicated. So, um, so we um, ask your prayers for Leanne Smith also. Others this morning? All right. Then let us join together in prayer. Oh, Lord, it is good to be in your house, to gather with family and friends, to be a part of this worship service as we turn our hearts and minds to you. Lord, it has been a, a busy week. Maybe it's been a week filled with camp activities. Maybe it's been a week of preparing for annual conference. Maybe it's been a week of just rest. But Lord, what we know is that whatever is going on in our lives is that you are in the midst of it, that you are leading us and guiding us through your Holy Spirit, through God the Father, and through Jesus the Son. The Trinity is active and working in our hearts and lives. And so, Lord, as we gather in your house today, we pray that you would come and move among us as we consider what it means to believe in God in three persons. A blessed trinity, as the old hymn says. And so, Lord, as we gather, we ask that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, as we gather, we are also mindful of the needs that are all around us, some of which we have mentioned and others that remain on our hearts. Lord, we do continue to pray for peace in our world and in our country. And Lord, we um, continue to pray for those who are ill, and maybe ill with COVID, maybe ill with um, other things, maybe facing surgery, maybe recovering from surgery. Lord, we have named several of them this morning, and we ask your healing touch and your presence to be with them. Lord, we also remember so many that have lost a loved one to death, and we pray your comfort and peace to be with them. And Lord, as we gather in your house, we are also mindful of the needs that maybe we didn't mention. Maybe it has to do with something at work or with friends or family or maybe something in our own lives that, Lord, we are dealing with. And we are grateful that you love us, that you care for us, that you hear us when we pray. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as our ushers come to receive our offering, let us join together in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful for your many blessings, the blessings of gathering in your house, the blessings of family and friends, of a safe and wonderful week for our youth at camp, and Lord, for your presence with us, we are so grateful. And so, Lord, as we give you back just a portion of what you've given us, we ask your blessings on these gifts and pray that they would be used for your good and your glory. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
remain standing as we join together in singing hymn number 61, Come Thou Almighty King. Thank you. you. may be seated when the children come down for the children's sermon. show you something. What is this? A what? Not a bike. What is it? Tricycle. Why is it a tricycle? Three wheels. That's what makes it different from a bicycle. It's a tricycle. It has three wheels. Do you like riding a tricycle? Do you still ride on one? Probably not. They don't make great big, well, they do make great big ones. I've actually used to have a big one that I think my dad built it or something, but I remember riding it around as an adult. Anyway, um, a tricycle needs three wheels to work properly. What happens if you take one of the wheels away? You, well, would it? It would only be two, and it would fall over, wouldn't it? I seem to remember also having a broken tricycle as a child and trying to make it go, but it one the axle would drag, and if you lost the front wheel, that's usually where the pedals are, and it, it wouldn't go. So without three wheels, a tricycle's basically not much good. Did you ever stop to think that guys like a tricycle? Now, wait a minute. What does that mean? We think of God as in three parts. A tricycle has three wheels. God comes to us in three ways. He is God the Father. He is the ruler. He is the father of us all. Just like a father is the head of the household, God is the head of everything in all creation. Kind of like the great big wheel there then on the tricycle that light leads us and guides us. We believe in God, and he leads and guides our lives so that we can follow him. So he's God the Father. That's one way. God the Son. Who is God's Son that we talk about? Jesus, that's right. God's son is Jesus, and Jesus loves us. He's kind of like our brother, and he loves us so much that he even gave up his life for us. So Jesus is our guidance and direction, and he's the giver of life for us. So God the Father, God the Son, anybody remember what the third one might be? The Holy Ghost. God the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, just like the third wheel there. And the Holy Spirit is God that lives in us. 
when we trust and believe in him and everything, he lives in our lives and helps direct and guide us in the ways we can go. So like a tricycle won't work very well with only one of its wheels missing, God is in three pieces that helps guide and direct our lives. He's our father, he is our brother, and he is the Holy Spirit that guides and directs us. So I think that's kind of a cool way to remember that God is three, all together, tricycle, all together, and it all works together that way to help our lives. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this children and our church family here. Help us to always remember you are our guidance and help us to always believe the three, three ways that you guide our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Still Amen. Thank you, choir. Well, today is Trinity Sunday, and 
Our scripture reading comes from the book of John. I'll be reading out of John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Just a short reading for us this morning. And so I invite you to hear the word of the Lord from John chapter 16. This is Jesus speaking. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I heard a story about a man who attended church only one Sunday a year. By the way, don't do that, right? We want you to come back next Sunday. But, but this man, he only came to church one Sunday a year. And, and a friend asked him, well, which Sunday do you go to church, Christmas or Easter? Neither one, the man said. I go to church on Trinity Sunday so I can laugh as the preacher tries to explain the Trinity. And so it is difficult. How can an average person understand the Trinity? How can God be three in one? How can we say with the Old Testament that God is one at the same time saying that God has multiple expressions? Ultimately, the Trinity is a mystery, a riddle, something that is beyond our comprehension. No one has ever been able to explain it adequately. Even the great St. Augustine of Hippo wrote 15 books on the Trinity over a 16-year period in the early 400s. The truth is that even the best metaphors of what the Trinity is and does fall short. It is a mystery that is beyond our understanding. And there is a mystery about God that I am willing to live with, and I hope that you are too. We need some mystery, something beyond ourselves in this world, something that Google doesn't know the answer to, and God is one of those things. Now, I don't believe that mystery should bother us because there are many things in life that we cannot understand, and yet we live with them and by them. When you go home this afternoon, you probably have a microwave oven in your house, do you understand how the microwave oven can take food and heat it red hot while the oven stays cool? Or when we go home or leave this place, we're going to flip a switch and the lights are going to go on and off according to how that switch works. And yet we may not understand, any, understand everything about electricity. When we go home and we turn on the spigot to that faucet at our house, we don't have to understand how plumbing works in order to have running water to take a bath or to wash our dishes. You see, there is lots of things in life that we simply don't have all the answers to. I heard about a family who had a small garden and their son, Anthony, was especially curious about how seeds would turn into flowers or vegetables and, and he would look at the pictures on the packages of the seed and and then look at the tiny seeds in his hands, and he wondered, how can those tiny seeds grow into those beautiful flowers and vegetables? Well, they planted the seeds, and as they grew the, the fruits and the vegetables, Anthony continued to wonder, and he asked lots of questions about how they grew. And the family says, frankly, we didn't have any good answers. We would say, well, the rain and the sun helped them grow, but what exactly turned those seeds into flowers and vegetables, we couldn't tell him. We didn't understand. And so it is for the Holy Trinity. The truths of God's dealings with us are as difficult for us to understand as it was to explain to Anthony how those tiny seeds grow into flowers and vegetables. There is a mystery about God, and, and a mystery that I believe we must accept. The doctrine of the Trinity does not attempt to explain God. 
The doctrine of the Trinity is, describes the tip of the iceberg above the waterline that we can see of God, while the, it's only a small part of what lies below. So we as Christians, we affirm the Trinity not as an explanation of God, but simply a way of describing what we know about him. Now, one of the interesting things about the doctrine of the Trinity is you will not find it in the scriptures, that there is no place in the Bible where it talks about the Trinity. Though as we read in John 16, Father, Son, and Spirit are present in the scripture at the same time. And yet, most churches, including ours, we use the doctrine of the Trinity at least once every Sunday. When the offering is received, many churches sing the doxology, which goes this way. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Many congregations also sing the Gloria Patri, as we do. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In fact, the Trinity is even used in the sacrament of baptism that Jesus directed that we should baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To be baptized in only one or two of those names would be improper. And as United Methodists, we will accept the baptism of any individual joining from another denomination as long as they were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as Jesus taught us in the Gospels. So the Trinity does not mean that there are three gods. It means that there is one God revealed in three ways, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'll look at them individually this morning. First, we affirm God the Father. We affirm God the Father. Now, the issue is not whether or not there is a God. 90% of all Americans, according to Mr. Gallup, tells us that 90% of all Americans believe in the existence of a higher power. 90% of all Americans. The real question is what kind of a higher power do we believe in? You see, as Christians, as followers of God, we affirm that the same God who molded the universe also cares about what happens in your life and mine. That God is individually interested in what happens to us. That God is actively and mysteriously involved in helping shape the events of your life and mine. So we refer to the first person of the Trinity as Father, and it says something to us about what God is like. In fact, Jesus went so far as to refer to God not only as Father, but as Abba, the Hebrew word which means Daddy. So can you imagine that this is God, the creator of the universe, the creator of the world, and and we saw some beautiful things in Hawaii and other places. This is God, the creator, and yet through the scripture we call him God the Father. We call him Daddy. What if we could think of God as that loving Father who waits patiently for us while we wander off and make our own choices and and fall away and when he is waiting for us to simply come back like the parable of the prodigal son. You see, it's easy to think of God as the omnipotent, holy other, righteous, all-powerful judge. And these are all traits of who God is. And we must indeed remember that he is all of those things. But what if our Christian understanding of God is to be correct, then we must also learn to think of God as kind, sympathetic, understanding, compassionate, gentle, loving, kind Father. Yes, there are some stern images of God in the Old and the New Testaments, even in the Gospels themselves. But the love of God is the major emphasis which runs throughout the Bible. There is no message which can break through the recalcitrant hearts and those that are reluctant to accept the goodness of God like the message 
of God's persistent love for us. A love given to us in spite of what we have done. A love that has been given to us and we didn't earn it. A love that comes despite our resistance. A love that heals when sickness comes into our lives. A love that restores, restores, and restores some more. The prophet Jeremiah caught the true message of our faith in God when he said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. So we first of all affirm a belief in God the Father and his everlasting love for us. Secondly, we say that we believe in the Son, Jesus Christ. We affirm a belief in the Son, Jesus Christ. You see, in Jesus, we believe that God took on human form. He came and lived among us, suffered the same trials that we suffer, the same ups and downs, the same feelings that we have experienced, that Jesus was fully human and fully God at the same time. Jesus is God with flesh. Soren Kierkegaard was the great Danish theologian of another century, and he tells a story of a prince who wanted to find a maiden suitable to be his queen. Well, one day, while running an errand in the local village for his father, the prince passed through the poorest section of town. As he glanced out of the windows of his carriage, his eyes fell upon a beautiful but poor peasant maiden. During the ensuing days, he often passed by the young lady and soon fell in love with her. But he had a problem. How would he seek her hand? Well, he could order her to marry him. After all, he was the prince. But even a prince wants his bride to marry him freely and voluntarily and not through coercion. He, does, he could have put on his most splendid uniform and driven up to her front door in his most expensive carriage with his finest horse. But if he did this, he would never be sure if the maiden loved him or simply what he had. So the prince came up with another solution. He would give up his robes, move into the village, entering not with a crown, but with the common garb of a peasant. He lived among the people, shared their interests and concerns, talked their language. And in time, the maiden that he loved so much grew to love him for who he was, and she loved him because he first loved her. This simple story explains what we Christians mean by the incarnation. That in Jesus, God put on flesh and he dwelt among us. This we call the incarnation. And this shows us beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is with us, that God is on our side, that he loves us. It also gives us a firsthand view of what God is really like. When people ask what God is like, those of us that are Christians, we point to Jesus and say, read the Gospels, read about Jesus. If you want to know what God is like, then read about Jesus. God himself is almost incomprehensible. It's too big. We can never comprehend God, otherwise we would be God ourselves. But in Jesus Christ, God comes to us and makes himself knowable. He put on flesh and dwelt among us, as John says in the first chapter of his gospel. We get to see a glimpse of his glory. We get to see a glimpse of his power. We get to see that in the person of Jesus, that God loves us and cares for us and wants to know us. And that God this same God that put the stars in the sky and created the universe and the world and all that is in us, he is willing to do whatever it takes to reach us, even death on a cross, so that you and I may be redeemed. So when we want to know God, we look to Jesus, the Son made flesh. So we affirm Jesus, God in human flesh. 
Lastly, we affirm a belief in the Holy Spirit. We affirm a belief in the Holy Spirit. Well, we wonder, well, what is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Korean Methodist Creed says it this way, and you can find it in your hymnal if you're interested. It says, we believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. The modern affirmation which we spoke earlier in the service words it this way, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. The Holy Spirit is our guide and our friend. The Greek word used for the Holy Spirit earlier in chapter 16 in verse 7, we didn't read it, but the Greek word used there is the Greek word paraclete, and it literally means one who walks alongside. And that is what the Holy Spirit does for us. Last week at Pentecost, we saw the Holy Spirit as the source of our power as the Holy Spirit came upon the Galileans and they did great and mighty things and thousands were, became believers in Jesus Christ. But today in Trinity Sunday, we see the Holy Spirit as the source of our guidance in a chaotic world. Think of the car that you got in to drive to church this morning or maybe is sitting in your driveway. The car will not go far without a motor, but don't try driving it without a steering wheel either. So it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us both power and guidance in our lives each and every day. Writer Gordon MacDonald tells about driving with his wife Gail to a neighboring community to attend a dinner. Well, they had never been in that area before and they were quickly lost. Seeing a policeman parked in his car, they pulled over and asked the policeman for directions. And the policeman said, well, you go down two lights and turn right, go to a fork in the road and bear left. Go two stop signs or it may be three. Oh, wait a second, here's an easier way. Make a U-turn and go back to that little shopping mall back there, you know, the one with the gas station on the corner. Turn left there and just follow the road down to the ocean. Well, then again, maybe try the first way. Oh, what the heck? Look, I'll take you there. Just follow me and stick close. This is what Gordon MacDonald writes. I followed him and stuck close, and it occurred to me along the way that that is the invitation of Christ to someone who wants to know God, to figure out the inner self and to understand how to live in the real world. Follow him and stick close. And so on this Trinity Sunday, the Holy Spirit is our guide and friend. Someone once asked Mrs. Einstein if she understood her husband's theory of relativ relativity. Oh no, she said, I don't understand it at all, but I do understand my husband and I trust him. So it is for us. We cannot begin to fathom the incomprehensible mysteries of God. But that does not mean we cannot know about God. The Trinity is God the Father who loves us. It is God the Son who is with us. It is God the Holy Spirit who guides us. And yet, it still remains a mystery. Do I understand the Trinity? My answer would have to be no. Even with all my study and with all of my reading and knowledge, I still don't understand it. But I believe it. I believe that God is active and working. I believe that the Holy Spirit guides us. I believe that Jesus is God in flesh who came to show us how to live. And belief is more important than understanding. And so we don't have to understand the Trinity in order to fully affirm it. And so we understand, not enough, but what we know is that God is with us, leading us and guiding us. Let us pray. Oh God, the truth is that we don't understand many things about this world. We don't understand why tragedies happen. We don't understand why even simple things happen, like turning on the lights and how they go on and off. Lord, but what we do understand is that you are with us. 
So it is for us, we don't understand many things about you, and yet, Lord, we trust you. We believe in you. We affirm a belief in God the Father who loves us and, and is waiting for us to come back to him. Lord, we affirm a belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God made flesh who came and dwelt among us to show us how to live, to show us God himself. And we believe in the Holy Spirit who lives and guides us each and every day. And so, Lord, we may not understand everything about you or understand everything about the Trinity, but, Lord, we believe. And so help us and lead us and guide us. It is all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we come to a time of response in our service, the altar is open if you'd like to come and pray. I'd also be glad to talk with you more if you'd like to know more about joining our church here at Grace as we seek to make a difference in our community of Ruston and beyond. I'd also be glad to talk with you if you'd like to know more about trusting in Christ and following God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit and Lord, as, as um, you accept Accept Jesus for yourself and make a personal profession of faith. Our closing hymn is number 64, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. Would you stand as we sing together number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. Would you please be seated for just a moment? Nick, if you'd come forward. Um, Nick Latrice was um, a part of our confirmation class and went through the confirmation classes but was unable to be here the Sunday that we did confirmation. And so he wants to come and join the, the Grace United Methodist Church. And he has already been baptized and a professing member of another church, so he's going to move his membership to Grace from another denomination. So Grace, um, if you'll turn with me um, in your hymnal to page 38 as we ask these questions of Nick and then as we welcome him to our congregation here at Grace. Thank you. So Nick, as members of Christ Universal Church, Will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And now, as a member of this congregation at Grace, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? 
And so, members of the household of God, I commend Nick to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. Would you respond? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. We do hope to see you tonight for our Bible study. It will um, it starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, someone mentioned to me that there's not a time in the bulletin, 6 o'clock. And we're watching one of my um, favorite episodes tonight, which um, has a very interesting conversation between Opie and Andy about um, how much he gives to the children's drive, uh, the char charitable children's drive. So poor, poor Horatio, poor Horatio. So we hope you'll join us for that tonight. And Nick is going to stand with me at the back door so that you can greet him and welcome him. God bless you. Please stand for our closing prayer. Oh Lord, we are grateful that you are with us. Lord, we may not understand everything about you, but we do know that you have shown yourself to us in Jesus Christ, that you lead us and guide us through the Holy Spirit, and Lord, that you are a loving Father waiting for us to come back to you. And so, Lord, as we go from this place, we pray that you would go with us and that others would see Jesus in all that we do and say. Lord, we, all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.